Hi all, welcome back to our channel ML4 Analytics. I am Nitesh and in this video today you will be learning that how you can set up a storage account in Microsoft Azure. So without wasting time, let's begin with this video or the tutorial. First of all, go to the create resource option or the all resources option then click on create. Search for storage account. So here is the option. Click on this create button. This is the main screen from where we will be starting creating our storage account in SEO. There will be like four or five steps like basics, advanced networking, data protection, encryption, adding some text for the billing purpose and then review and create our block storage. So, first of all, we need to provide the subscription ID that is Nitesh in my case and a resource group name. For me, it's Nitesh underscore resource underscore group. You can choose or create a new resource group for yourself. Then the next detail that it is asking for is a storage account. For the name, please note that your storage account name should be unique in complete Azure. So let's say I have a different subscription. If I am creating a storage account like Nitesh, then if you are also trying to create a storage account with name Nitesh, then it will fail or throw you the error that name is already taken. So for example, I already have a storage account 01. So instead of that, let's create the two. This is the name for us. Select a region which is nearest to you or the most accessible area for you for me it is india so i'm going for that asia pacific west india then for performance there are two options the one is standard and the premium so what is the difference between the standard and the premium you can choose the standard one if you are not looking forward to some very instantaneous io operations however if you are going for that then you will be going you should go to the premium one as it provides you a SSD storage with very low latency and in I choose the premium one there are multiple types of storages that you can select for example page blobs block blobs file shares so what is block blobs best for high transaction rate or low latency storage you can say then file shares that is best for enterprise or high performance applications that need to scale and the last one page blobs or the default option that it was providing us best for random read and write file operations so if you are working with critical jobs that need very low latency or very heavy transactions then go for the premium one otherwise if you are using the blob storage only for storing some data which can be used with high latency as well and if you are looking for the backup of data then also you can use the standard one in standard one you get two kinds of redundancy options first is lrs and second is grs lrs or locally redundant storage what azure does is it creates a image or a backup copy of your data in the same location only if you are going for a grs that is geo redundant storage then it creates the backup copy of your data into a secondary region for us I will be choosing only the LRS option only. So let's click on next advanced. Here it is asking us to choose some security related things. For example, required secure transfer for REST API operations. For me, yes, I will need that. It's up to you whether you want to enable it or not. The next is enable block public access. You can just hover over this option and learn that why we need that why you want to enable it or not then enable storage key access i would recommend that you enable it then what you can also do is if you are using the azure active directory you can click this one also so what it will do is whenever someone is trying to access data from blob storage by default it will try to go to the Azure Active Directory authentication or the authorization like MFA or something like that. But if you don't want 
you can just uncheck it for me i don't need that so i'm unchecking it then next comes the minimum tls version please note that soon microsoft azure will be disabling version 1.0 and 1.1 for tls so recommended is version 1.2 however you can always select the minimum one as well till next one year i would say the next one is data lake storage gen 2 you want to enable it or not it's up to you what it will provide you it will enable you a hierarchical namespace option you can see a hierarchy between all the folders that you will be creating and some additional level of security will be provided in data lake storage gen 2 also you can use this data directly in the work of big data analytics if you need that please enable this for me yes going forward we will be making some videos where we will be using this storage for data like gen 2 and some big data analytics so i have enabled it over here next is shh file transfer protocol it's up to you whether you want to enable it or not but there is a condition for that if you are enabling hierarchical namespace or the data like gen 2 then you cannot choose this option as mentioned over here otherwise you can choose this then there is one more security level information if you want to enable network file system protocol then you can choose this one but it is not required for this video session so i am not choosing this one then one of the next options is access tire that is hot or cool hot or cool there is a small difference between them again the latency difference for day-to-day -day uses, the recommended one is hot. For backups, you can go for the cool one. Or archiving your data, you can go for the cool one. For us, I am choosing the hot one as we will be doing some interactions on day-to-day -day basis with this one. Next, if you want to enable the file shares of large files, by large files, we are corresponding to big data files, like TBs of data. If we enable it, then there is one condition over here. You cannot enable the geo redundant storage, which is provided with the standard account. For example, in the previous step, we chose the LRS one, not the geo redundant one. If we enable this one, by default, it, it will always be LRS only, not geo redundant. So please note that point when you are working with this option. For us, we don't need this. So I'm not enabling it. Next is the networking part. So networking part is to provide you some additional layer of security. How? It allows you to enable some firewall in different manner. You can always enable the access over only a VPN, virtual private network, which you can provide over here. Also, you can provide some IP lists, whitelisting some range of IP or a particular endpoint of your system if you have the private ip then you can go for this in most of the offices or organization people usually go with the public endpoint or the private endpoint in public endpoint they usually provide the virtual network of their firm and private endpoint they provide a list or a range of ips for which the things need to be enabled on azure for us for this session I am keeping it public endpoints on networks. The next option is data protection. By data protection, we mean like if you accidentally delete some data from your blob storage, then how you can recover that. So these are the options for that. For example, enable soft delete for blobs. Accidentally, you have deleted some blob storage, then you can always recover it in seven days. You can set it, let's say 20 days or 90 days or however, how long you want. I would recommend you keep this amount short, this number small, because sometimes it is possible that the blob storage size is TBs or in GBs. So that adds some extra strain over the system or your billing cycle. So try to keep this small. So let's put it back to seven only. Again, enable soft delete for containers. In blob storage, you always create some containers to store or upload your files so if you want to recover them this is again and if you have deleted some file and you want to recover that then again soft delete is enabled for that 
However, you can choose to disable these, but that is your choice. Now tracking for this one that is not enabled because we have enabled the hierarchical namespace or the data lake gen2 storage for this. So they are by default disabled for us. And same reason for this one, access control. So going towards the encryption part, here you can encrypt your data or tell the system how you want to encrypt the data. There are two options. One is Microsoft managed keys and the second one is customer managed keys. I would recommend that you go for the Microsoft managed keys because it reduces the overhead for the customer to keep a set of keys with them. So always try to choose this one. It is more secure and easy to use. Now, second option is enable support for customer managed keys. Again, it is for the same thing, customer managed keys, but you can choose that on which options you want to enable these keys or not. By default, it says blob and files only. However, I would recommend that you choose all service types, blob, files, tables, and queues for this option. Then the last option is enable infrastructure encryption. What happens is, Currently, by these two options, by default, the Azure is encrypting your data with AES-256 encryption, which is one of the best encryptions available at this time. However, that is placed at service level. And if you want to add another level of encryption or you want to double encrypt your data, then you can enable this option. It will encrypt your encrypted data at the infrastructure level at Azure to make your data more secure. And there will now be two keys for both the encryptions. However, data processing or data retrieval may be a little bit slower because you have double encrypted your data. I'm not enabling this because that is not required for this video. So let's go with the next one. Here you can add some tags. Let's keep it as blob 02 maybe and same value for this review and create so this is the last step for creating a blob storage however once you have the storage account you cannot just go and upload your files in that you will need some containers to do that so all the information according to me is correct and also if you are looking for your automation then you can go over here and download this template for yourself and use those line of codes to automate the things. Now click on create. This may take some time, let's say around two to three minutes. So I will be skipping this part. Okay, so our deployment is done and our storage account is ready. So let's go to the resource now. Over here, you can see all the details that we set while creating the account. Now, moving to the containers. Since we want to store some data in the containers, so let's create a new one. I would recommend that you don't use the default one. Always create a new one for yourself. Let's name it as Nitesh Containers 02. And here you can select that what kind of access you want to provide on this container like private, no anonymous access, blob, anonymous read access for blobs only, container, anonymous read access for containers and blobs. If we choose this one, you get this warning stating that anyone anonymously can access the data from this container if they have the keys or the link for that blob storage but we don't want that we want to keep it private to keep the thing more secure so let's go and create this one okay we have the earth container now let's go to this container and let's try to upload some file over here select a file let's click this and upload so there are a few more options over here. So let's look at them as well. If I take this one, this will override the already existing file. That is, if 
while uploading a new file it sees that there is already a file with same name then that file will be replaced then in advanced settings there are these kind of settings like authentication type by default it is account key that is being coming from blob storage only blob type by default it is blog blob however you can select other types of blobs as well page blob append blob everything then there is the block size in the blog each file is divided into multiple blocks so by default it is 4 mb block and it if you look at this line it says that block and append blocks are comprised of blocks and each block can support up to 50000 blocks that's a lot so your file can divide up to 50000 blocks to keep the things easy or easy for the application and for fast retrieval then access tire since we will be using it, using it on day to day basis it is hot otherwise you can always choose cool as well over here you can also provide a folder name to which you want to upload this by folder name i mean you can always go and create a new folder by clicking on add directory it will create a new folder and you can mention the folder name over here since there is no folder for us so it is empty next encryption scope use existing default container scope that is what we used choose an existing scope you can also define different types of scopes for your encryption this option is for that only so let's close this one since our file is with us you can also go and click on this one and it provides you some details like when the file was last modified or created for us it is still same because there is no update to this file at the moment and what is the file size in which kind of storage it is stored like blob blob and many other information you can also download this file from over here so guys this is it for the blob storage provisioning and how you can set up different kind of containers in it i hope you understood that how easy it is to do the things with azure and how dynamically it can set up different services for us i would recommend you to go forward with it and start using the azure in your organization also you can recommend this it is a very great tool i hope you like this video please go and click on this bell notification button in the youtube so that you can get notified whenever we are launching our new video on the channel regarding SEO or Power BI services or maybe day-to-day -day practice with Python. Please like this video, subscribe or comment. Have a nice day.